Good evening and welcome to the API's presentation, your official source for the latest on government's plans, programs and policies. I am Nadia Slater. This evening, the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College tries to meet the demand for technical and vocational training among young people. This country makes a mark at the recent Windward Island Games in St. Lucia. The National Breadfruit Festival gets on the way. And the artwork of Lennox Dings Johnson, the Renaissance Man, is on display. Those stories and more. But first, let's join Kesha Woodley at our news desk. Good evening. Welcome to News Watch for Tuesday, August 7, 2018. I am Keisha Woodley. Residents of Ginger Village and surrounding areas are asked to note that vehicular access to the Ginger Village Road from the Belmont Main Road shall be barred from Wednesday, August 8th to Sunday, August 19th, 2018. This is to facilitate the construction of the crossroad culvert that is part of the road rehabilitation works currently underway. The continued cooperation of the traveling public will be appreciated. Meanwhile, a team of medical personnel from the Caribbean Medical Mission, CMM, of New Jersey is currently in state conducting a medical mission. In honor of their mission, the team was hosted at Prime Minister Gonzalez's official residence for dinner last Saturday night. Public Relations Officer of the CMM, Dr. Jacqueline Games, expressed gratitude to Prime Minister Gonzalez for hosting the team. Dr. Games specially acknowledged the contribution of Dr. Veronica Kid francois to the 2018 mission. Uh, with her help, come up here. Come up. Yeah, and with Dr. Gale. These containers could not come to St. Vincent just like that. Somebody have to pay for them. <laughs> so. <laughs> we called the consulate up and we said, wow, we got a consulate and we're going to let them pay for these containers. No. no. <laughs> so I had to call all my friends, Dr. Gill again. <laughs> and I had Veronica do some fundraiser and we were able to send two containers pay, fully paid to St. Vincent and even had a little extra money. We got some extra money? Yeah. yeah. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has issued a statement of condemnation for the attack against the life of President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, His Excellency Nicolas Maduro. The government expresses its strong condemnation of the assassination attempt on the life of President Maduro, the duly elected president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, in Caracas on Saturday, August 4, 2018, during the special event to commemorate the 81st anniversary of the founding of the Bolivarian National Guard. According to the statement, and I quote, the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines also express their profound sympathy to those who were injured or affected in any way by this dastardly act. We trust that a full and speedy investigation will reveal the culprit and that they will be brought to justice. End of quote. Finally, on Newswatch, the Luke's Kids Club Summer Program was launched on Friday, August 3rd, 2018. Two major sponsors were represented at the launch, Flow and Metrosyn General Insurance. We have been sponsors of Luke's Kids Club since the inception in 2011, and we are really very thrilled to be able to support such a worthy program. It has been several years and they've been very consistent and they've had a major impact on the lives of children in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This summer program is an extraordinary program. Um, the components of this program, frankly speaking, are um, exceptional and beyond um, you know, the, the expectation of a, a normal summer program. Founder of the Luke's Kids Club Summer Program and Minister of Health, 
Wellness and the Environment, Honorable Luke Brown, said the aim of the program is to instill discipline and to encourage children to learn essential skills. We want to provide a supportive environment where they see that as being true and where they explore all the possibilities to just make the most of their lives as we indicated. Knowing fully well that certain values are important for that. You need self-discipline, you need dedication, you need perseverance. And these are things too that we could learn from looking at the life of Nelson Mandela. We want to teach them about being active citizens and therefore we're going to have discussions surrounding contemporary issues relevant to active citizenship. We want to tell them that they could be agents of change. So quite apart from the content that is delivered, it is these sort of life-changing messages that we want to plant into their subconsciousness so that they too could become persons who we celebrate in a hundred years from their birth. These are all the stories making this edition of Newswatch. Thank you for viewing. Stay with us for the rest of the API's presentation. Good evening. I am Keisha Woodley. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Welcome back. A number of young people have been engaged in a youth employability training program hosted by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College and supported by the Mustique Charitable Foundation. The five-week program is geared towards sharpening the tech fox skills of these youth as well as providing them with an avenue for employment and entrepreneurship. Kathy Rose has more in this report. The Ministry of Education is putting a lot of emphasis on technical vocational education for young people to equip them with skills which are transferable to the job market or with further training can create self-employment. Early in July, the Mustique Charitable Foundation collaborated with the Ministry to hold the Youth Employability Training Program. The program, which is in its second year, will run for five weeks and is training 80 young Vincentians in refrigeration and air conditioning, electrical installation, introductory plumbing, and food preparation. The society is understanding that there needs to be a greater alignment between the skills on offer by the workforce and those required by the marketplace. What I'm saying is that there seems to be a mismatch between the skills that you have and what industry needs. You can hardly find plumbers and people trained in electrical installation and food preparation, etc. But you are unemployed. There are jobs available, but you can't get them. You can't get them because you're not competent in the areas that they want. And why are you not competent in the areas? Because you're not trained in those areas. So we must train people to meet these needs. This program is managed by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College. The college, for many years, has had a working relationship with the Mustique Charitable Foundation. But I think what's so exciting about this summer employability program is that it is reaching young people who are not in regular education, not moving into tertiary education. At the ages of the students, um, your dean tells me, between 17 and 35 years old. And I'm so delighted to welcome those of you who are between, say, 25 and 35, because it's a great leap of faith to admit to yourself that you need further skills training and you're going to be self-disciplined enough to go through a five-week program. Those who were selected from the many who applied are very lucky to be exposed to this type of training and according to their instructors, they have been making very good use of the opportunity. Initially, with the theory, 
they were not responding well at all. Probably the field people, okay, probably come here with the concept that um, they're going to do practicals. But with electrical, you need to do some theory. So with the theory, they're kind of, you know, not sure most interest. But now we're doing the practical, everybody is really into it. Well, so far, they have been responding positively, I must say. In every classroom session, you know, it won't be a perfect classroom session, but majority of them have been responding positively. Um, they are quite excited about the program. For the past three weeks they have been here, I think they have learned a lot. And um, from all indications, they have been very receptive to the program. And um, We have one more week, and I think um, they probably were hoping that it could have been longer. So they are really, really enjoying it. Um, it's very challenging because of the number in the class, but I have enjoyed working with them. My joy is seeing at the end of the day that they can walk away with a skill. So when a candidate comes to me not knowing how to do something and he or she can leave enabled, then it gives me a joy. And at the end of the day, when I see the, the look on their faces and I hear what they say, then I feel happy knowing that I would have done something. For many of the participants, this is a wonderful opportunity for them to upgrade their skills or in some cases, explore new areas. I'm happy and glad about this program that um, I could learn more about plumbing and to get my own job at the end of the day because there's no job hard to get and I'm glad to see many young people coming out to learn this skill because it's very important. In my village, we don't have much young lady doing this program and this job. So I think it's my option and my best job cho 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 choice to doing this. This is the first time I have been introduced to this and I take my education seriously. And I just stay focused and take what the teacher tells us to do and follow exactly what he says to do. And I enjoy it a lot and it teach me how to, to wire a house and, and how to manage how to do the electricity. And it's given me an enhance of what to do when I get out there in the job place. And very much interested in the program and I hope that more young people will get involved and that they can know much about how to do their own wiring of a house. And it is a very good job and a very good skills that they can get from, from here. I will say go for it because it's a very interesting field. You get to learn a lot. Um, just don't sit down home and don't do anything. The Charitable Foundation of Musty, they decided to look at the youths and give them a chance at something. So if they see a opportunity like this come about, is to take it. So far, it's wonderful. So far. Have you learned anything here that you didn't know before? Oh yeah. Well, first I learned um, how to fully fish, different um, knife cut, and how to, well, there's one thing I didn't learn before was cut, when they cut in an onion, the, the way you cut an onion without making it one eye. So far the course has been very good. Um, it helps me out a lot and in my spare time I have nothing to do so it's very good. It's really going good because by the end of the day I get to learn and the skill. So when I go home I practice it. The participants are close to completion of this rewarding experience. While it's offered an alternative to employment for these youngsters, the ministry is hoping that it also encourages many to look at tech work education through different lens. And I'm quite encouraged by what I've seen from the young people. This has been an eye-opener sort of in terms of um, our young people and the, the appetite that has been open for skills, which I now call the new currency of the 21st century. I think um, what has happened in the beginning is that on advertising these this training program in June, within four days of um, opening applications, we had close to 400 applications from young people um, just to take, and we just could accommodate 80 of them. So that was a difficult process, accommodating 80 from almost 400. I am however convinced 
at the 80 that we selected, they were um, the best fit. Uh, the, I'm encouraged as well that over the last three weeks, the attendance has been almost 100%. We just had just about three persons who might have been absent just about one on one occasion. I visit them almost every day and I see changes in the way in which they, they would approach the work that they're doing. I see the enthusiasm that comes out and that again to me is quite encouraging. Children, don't be afraid to come to me. I am safe and friendly. School is my name, education is a game. Come and have fun with me. Come to school, let the children come. Come to school, everybody come. Come, 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 one and all. Come to school. Child friendly schools. An initiative of the Ministry of Education in collaboration with UNICEF. A production of the Ministry of Education's Media Unit. Thanks for staying with us. A team of 62 student athletes from schools across St. Vincent and the Grenadines and eight officials successfully represented this country at the 2018 Woodward Island School Games held in St. Lucia. The Vincentian team, who tied for second position with host country St. Lucia, returned home on Tuesday, July 31st. The API joined the officials from the Ministry of Education at the Argyle International Airport to welcome the team home. Shana Daniel has the details. The team of young people who represented St. Vincent and the Grenadines at the recently concluded Windward Island School Games returned with medals and trophies as testament of their outstanding performance at this year's Games. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines team tied with host country St. Lucia for the second spot, a huge improvement over their fourth place from last year's Games. The API caught up with some members of the team as well as officials from the Ministry of Education who were on hand at the Argyle International Airport to welcome back the jubilant team. Hi, my name is Ashanti Williams. I was involved in basketball. Um, the experience was lovely, you met a lot of people from different countries, made new friends and the activities were great and I love the fact that we got a chance to cheer on each other in different sports and stuff like that. Well, my name is Annette Mori from Oman Shows. I compete in the 2400 meters. Um, again, it was, it was good. Um, I actually enjoy watching basketball and um, the volleyball. I thought it was, bo was boring but when I really sat down and watched the games, it was actually fun. I actually think about trying them but I didn't do that. <laughs> Um, and I see you have some medals. Tell us about those. Uh, the gold for the 4x4 four four for um, the males, the silver from the 400 meters, and the 4x1. Yeah. So, what are your overall impressions of the Windward Island Games? Well, it's my first time coming. Um, it, it was good. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations and all the best to you. Well, yeah, I see God. you have a big trophy. Did you have to pay overweight or anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, first, congratulations. Tell us who you are and about the, the games you were involved in there in St. Lucia. My name is Delshan. Welcome. I was involved in volleyball and we came first for male and second for female. It was an exciting tournament. I'm still excited right about now. <laughs> well, I, 
I can understand you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, the tournament was very good. We came first for male volleyball, second for female volleyball. We tie for um, football, and we came second overall. So uh, it was exciting. Although it is my last year, I really missed it. And I will miss my players, my volleyball players. Yeah. Well, I played football and also volleyball. Football? And volleyball. Okay. And it seems as if you were successful? Yeah. Tell us about the games. Well, in the volleyball game, we came first overall, and in the football game, we came second. Okay. Was it your first time representing St. Vincent? No, at the Winwood Islands game? Uh -huh. No, it's my third time. So, how was it this time compared to the other times? Well, it was good. Um, as I said, the reservation was better than normal. Yeah. It went well, fight hard, because it's been a long time. Vinci never performed like this. And I was shocked to see the performance and so on. Communication, everything was good. And I'm hoping that they do well next year. Okay. So, what's your name and what are the games you played in? My name is Costi Bailey. I played basketball and I, I, I run athletics. So you yourself were successful. I see you have medal, a trophy. Yes, please. We brought second overall for basketball and I brought fifth for 1500 in athletics. So was it your first time in the Winwood Island Games? Yes, please. And what was the experience like for you? Well, it was very, very, very good. I enjoyed it a lot made new friends and I'm hoping to continue with everything that is going on right about now. All right. Well, stay positive. Congratulations to you and all the best. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kendall Thomas and I was the coach for both male and female basketball at the games. Um, the female came in last position. Um, very disappointed, but you know, there's very little outlet for them to play locally. And I think that's something that we really need to do to develop female basketball, develop the interest for female basketball. The males did really well. They came in second. Um, you know, we, have, we were the smallest team in the competition, and the guys um, showed a lot of heart, a lot of desire, and they played very well. So I'm very pleased with the, the male performance, but female was a little bit lacking. But, you know, I think that there's great room for improvement. And I expect, you know, going forward into next year's game that we would do a lot better. Natasha Sandy Stapleton, netball coach. Um, it was, I think it was one of the most um, successful in that the, the whole attitude of the athletes was, they were very confident going in, coming from St. Vincent, we had a pre-camp and then going into the games themselves. Um, we placed second overall and that is really commendable coming from our position last year, which was fourth. We came second this year and we can only hope for great things because a lot of the athletes who are here now are of age and eligible for selection for next year. So we consider this to be a rebuilding process for us and we know that next year will be greater. Um, this year the experience was wonderful. Uh, the team did very well in terms of their places as compared to last year. This year we had a very powerful management team, everybody gelled together, everybody moved together and I think that was one of our strongest um, strengths. The staying in a hotel, the amenities were, were great, but it posed a great challenge for us in terms of supervision of the students because the hotel said we can only have four people in a room and we had to appoint young adults. Uh, that posed a challenge because we had to go and supervise and always be on their cases to make sure. But all in all, our performance, our togetherness, true Vinci spirit, we were one of the best teams. We were identified as the best team in terms of discipline. And I am very happy for that. The students were great. We had a great outing yesterday because they were cooped up for so long in those hotel rooms. You just go to the game, you come home, you have to go in the room because there are other guests. And we couldn't use the pool. So we had a, a real nice outing yesterday and I think the students uh, appreciated it. I can only see good going forward for the rest of the Windward Island games in other years. If we carry 
the discipline that we had this year and the togetherness of the management team, the way we were able to pull the students together, I think we uh, will have, Sinvins will have a very sound display. We'll bring home the cup next time instead of second. Well, we're very happy to be here this morning at the Argyle International Airport to welcome back to St. Vincent the team that represented us at the Windward Island School Games. We're very proud of these young people and we believe that this is a very positive side of the youth sometimes we don't see. We, we hear a lot about the negative activities they're involved in, but we are proud of these young people and we are going to be doing our very best to see to it that they continue along this path and we would offer them our support. Okay, this morning we are here to welcome home the team of young people who went to St. Lucia to represent St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the Winner Island School Sports. We are happy to report that this group of students came second, and which is much better than they did last year when they came in fourth. We understand that a lot of things are being said about youths negatively in our community but because we have seen what some exposure can do for our young people we are hoping that this trip will en enable them to perform a little better not just academically but in the sports and also socially because we have seen that they have meshed as a team and that's very important for them going forward so i'd like to congratulate them once again and we thank them for being good ambassadors for st vincent and the grenadines we were a little apprehensive when they went out in terms of their ability to um, deliver. There were a number of challenges, but I'm very happy with the results. When they started, they were do almost last in every, in every sport. But the resilience and the teamwork and their commitment led them to be um, placed in second position in the games and I'm very elated and I know they can only get better if they continue as a team and we continue to work on areas such as discipline and, and um, conflict resolution and commitment to, to sports. The annual Windward Island School Games were held this year in St. Lucia and saw Grenada capturing the top spot. St. Vincent and the Grenadines tied with host country St. Lucia for second position and Dominica settled for fourth place. For the API, I am Shana Daniel reporting. We can't do anything about some diseases, but we can prevent cervical cancer. I will vaccinate to tackle this chronic disease and secure my daughter's life. Thanks, Mommy, for securing my future. Prevent cervical cancer and save Vinci Girl. If you're just joining us, you're viewing a presentation of the Agency for Public Information. The 2018 Emancipation Month of Activities kicked off with the historic renaming of the Rabuka National Park to the Joseph Chatelier National Park on August 1st. The Ministry of Tourism, Sports and Culture, in collaboration with various rural community groups, will be hosting a number of activities to commemorate the 180th year since the abolition of slavery in the British West Indies. One of these activities is the Breadfruit Festival. In the following segment, the API's Shala John speaks with representatives of the Ministry of Culture and a Breadfruit Committee member about their coming activities. Land of the Blessed. With me in studios is Mr. Anthony Thibbles, Chief Cultural Officer within the Ministry of Tourism, Sports and Culture. And today we're going to speak about the upcoming events for this year's Emancipation Month. Emancipation and... Month. So Mr. Thibbles, welcome to the API Studios. You're a wealth of knowledge, <laughs> especially Thank with you. regards to culture and uh, the folk aspects of, of, of our heritage. Now, Emancipation Month is very important for us, being a nation basically that sprang out of slavery, slavery you want experience. to put it like that. 
mm -hmm. um, events would have taken place, I think, from Emancipation Day, which started on the 1st. Right. Yes, we had Emancipation Day itself up at the Rabaka area, and uh, that celebration focused in three parts. We had a general day of entertainment, of focus on the folk things of the country. We looked at African fashion, we had drumming, we had dance, we had steel band. All of that came together. But the month of August has 31 days and I know right. <laughs> there are some upcoming events that will showcase parts of our unique heritage. Could you speak right. to some of these events? So we are bringing together as we have done in other years, a breadfruit festival and a focus on the breadfruit. And this year, two communities, three communities are doing two events. The communities of Greggs and Mespo are twinning their activity and that will be held on the 12th of August. And then the North Leeward community is making their presentation on the 18th of August in Chateaubelair. The department is trying to raise awareness of the folk traditions and so we are going to do a testing this year and participate in these two breadfruit festival uh, programs with a focus on the folk element. We will look at ring games, we will look at the traditional dances, we will look at the coconut bat cricket uh, in the tip and go one format, which I, those persons who are a little bit older will know, but which youngsters are not playing as regularly anymore. We will look at jacks, we will look at marbles, we will look at other ways, morale and, and, and some of those other traditional schoolyard games and try to encourage the children, first of all, to know the game because uh, if you've never played the game, you don't know how it's played. So first we want to help them learn the games and then we want to encourage them to constantly play. And we're looking to develop that element of, of things. So we have that. Um, we might even be able to get a cart or two out on, on the road. <laughs> and um, those persons who are a little bit older, who have a bruise or two that they remember from riding a cart, well, we want to pass that on to the youngsters. <laughs> well, that sounds very interesting. I mean, obviously, the youth these days have a great deal to learn from the elder in terms of our culture. Now, focus is on breadfruit. Now, breadfruit is part and parcel with our heritage. Are you aware of any folk element or representation of breadfruit within our culture that you could speak to? Because, I mean, we have a lot of bananas and that kind of thing, but what okay. do you think the presence of breadfruit has been in our folklore? Um, the breadfruit tree it comes to us from Tahiti. Uh, persons who know about the mutiny on the bounty story, um, it's quite a famous story out of the English history and it is something that we read as young people reading literatures of the world. So you have that um, real history uh, occurring. Then when we played certain games the young breadfruit itself became either our cricket ball or our football. So it has been in our life for that. Additionally, we used to make what we call doll baby with the flowering plant oh, okay. because of the way that it is shaped. And uh, that too was part of, of, of our tradition. The wood that is cut from the grown mature tree has been used in making floors and uh, in a number of other ways. It made furniture and uh, so that tree provided fruit. The gum was used for chewing as chewing gum before we had chewing gum that we buy in the store. 
the leaves were food for our animals and it also provided the opportunity of chewing it to handle migraine headache and uh, then of course the fruit itself was part of the standard staple food when we got into world war ii people discovered that you could dry the fruit and powder it and make it serve as flour to replace wheat flour which you couldn't get boats into st vincent because of the uh, various submarines torpedoing the merchant ships that allowed us to have flour and uh, make cakes and other things and uh, so that plant has been part of the life of uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines for a very long time. Well definitely it has a lot of significance in regards to our culture and then of course one key aspect of the breadfruit is it's part of our national dish. And it is officially part of the it's part of the official national dish that is part of the life of the country so it's been a very big part of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for many years and now we have the breadfruit festival and that gives us good opportunities. Well, for this year's festival we have a lot of activities planned. Um, we have a packed entertainment package. We're gonna have an exhibition where we're gonna have the different varieties of breadfruit being displayed on that day. Perhaps we're gonna have some breadfruit flour to sample, but the main event of that evening will be the entertainment aspect of the festival, which will be happening around six, seven or 8 p.m. on the 18th. And um, we're going to have a lot of performances by Electric, Daddy, Upstage, Calypso Tent, and so much more. So this year, we're really encouraging persons to come out and support us. And this is happening in the North Leeward constituency. Yeah. In what venue? At what venue? At Mission Corner, Chateau Belair, starting from 11 a.m. So a lot of breadfruit products are going to be on display for the exhibition. Yeah. What are you likely to have um, on display? We know the roasted breadfruit will of course be center stage, um, but any other items we can look forward to? Well, we have breadfruit chips, we're going to have breadfruit cakes, lasagnas, breadfruit bakes, and a whole lot more to experience. So in terms of the cultural aspect of the celebration, no. You mentioned a lot of uh, artists who will be performing. Yeah. Is there any particular breadfruit themed slogan, song that the committee is uh, engaging these artists in this year? Yes, our theme is em embracing the versatility of the superfruit breadfruit. That's ah, the superfruit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Well, I mean, that is wonderful to know that we're doing so much for yeah. something that plays such a major role in our heritage. Thank you so much, Ms. Pear. And mm -hmm. any last words for Vincentians? So the Nortlywood Breadfruit Fest will be held on the 18th of August, Mission Corner, Chateaubelair, starting time, 11 a.m. Okay, folks, you've heard it here. Please come out in your numbers and be a part of this very important event celebrating Emancipation Month here is in the Titanic Gardens. Thank you. Finally, this evening, Lennox Dinks Johnson is an artist, a songwriter, a musician. He's a consummate Renaissance man, and his works are currently being featured at the Yulu Arts Center at Villa. Founder of the Yulo Arts Foundation, Camille Saunders Musa, says the inspiration for the exhibition came from her desire to showcase local talent. The PI's Kesha Woodley was there and has the following reports.
what pieces are you mainly working on since we last spoke? Well, Sinners is a one-man show. I had to, you know, have enough, enough that that could, you know, make the, the wall doesn't look scanty. So I had to fill the wall as, as with as much as possible. I mean, it's better for me too because the more, um, you know, more paintings I have, better people will see a more wider variety uh, um, of the work. There's, there's one, um, most of them are here, there's just one I'm still working on, mm -hmm. but that will be ready in time for the own because the home is on, um, on Saturday, mm -hmm. today's Thursday, so I will, I will get through that. And if any, uh, any more, you know, simpler, smaller ones, it's quite possible. Mm -hmm. So, people come in here to view your paintings, can they purchase if they so desire? Of course. Um, there are a few, well, uh, the few of them that is not for sale, but the majority will be for sale. Yeah. There will be a price tag also, that so they can identify um, what's painted with prices. You know. uh -huh. So for persons to want to come out, maybe even people who are not necessarily interested in art, how, what can you say to them to encourage them to come out through your paintings? Well, there are lots of persons, um, most of them would have seen my work. Some may not have seen the work and they might probably more than likely be persons, you know, Vincent's and living abroad or even visitors who'll be coming in who you could give them an opportunity. They, they heard about things, Johnson, and there's an, uh, an opportunity to, to view the work and, and, and draw their own conclusions. I'm not telling anybody, um, I never told anybody that I'm the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never <laughs> give anybody that impression either. Mm -hmm. People say, say that. Mm -hmm. So people could come and look at them and they could draw, draw their own conclusion as to, you know, okay. to what. Well, this piece is my, um, my, favorite, my favorite piece. Uh, the title of it is True Love Endures to the End. So what, <laughs> what I try to depict is, um, if you notice um, the hands, they're holding hands, and you could notice from the, from the look of the hand, you could see that they are age, probably in the 80s. Uh, but it, um, the, the, the message is, uh, the whole idea is, is to show that um, a marriage can last for a long, long time, you know, um, the, the love of my in, 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 a, in a relationship could be maintained for a long time. It depends on how you know persons look at their, um, their spouses. What sort of advice can you give to young people who are thinking about or maybe hesitant in pursuing art whether for university studies and later on as a career? Well, I give the same answer. I, I've, I've been asked this question numerous times <laughs> and I always give um, the, the, the same answer, right? I encourage parents to encourage their children, even supplying them with the, with the materials that's necessary for the, um, the, you know, the development. I, I know probably some have the same mentality today, but before I remember, um, in, you know, some, sometime in the past, not so much so today, but they might still have a few. What I'm talking about is parents will see their child, uh, you know, sketching or drawing and they will try to tell them, you know, discourage them. Put that down, go and take up your, your you know, because everybody wants their, their um, child to be a like doctor, lawyer, that sort of thing. But, you know, even though they're, they're, they're pursuing something at that level, they must have something um, in the, that they could fall back on. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the, you know, the biggest um, artists sometimes, they, wouldn't, they didn't start out, start out as, as artists. Mm -hmm. Because you could get into an accident, become incapacitated, and then you, you just remember um, you, you've been doing art and you could just fall back on it and, and, and make a living. The other thing too is that art today is big business. Very big business. Look at um, computer, all these, um, you know, this, um, what you call them again, the apps and, and even video games. Mm -hmm. You take artists to do those things. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, um, um, what you call it, graphic and art or, or whatever. Yes, all of those is, is artists. So artists is being. So I don't think any any parents they should not. I can't tell them what to do, but they should not be you know discourage the child. But they should encourage the child because 
everybody but, but, but may not be academically inclined. There are a lot of children that could not necessarily good at the books, mm -hmm. but when it comes to working with their hands, you know, and they could learn easy, like, like mechanic, you know, uh, if, you know, these are the areas um, sometimes that, that uh, a person, they, 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 they look down on, on, on certain areas of work in our society. But art, I say, is a, is a, is a go. <laughs> I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing here at the Yulu Arts Center. Mm -hmm. yes. So tell us a little bit about the summer program. Okay, um, we've been running this summer program which is called Growing Young SVG Artists. This is the 18th year we're doing this program. And when we started, we started with about five children, in the, uh, 15 children in the Kingstown area. And now we have grown, we do it in four locations and uh, we do it in we say Kingstown Villa area because recently we just moved to um, the villa. And um, we do it in Georgetown, Barley, and Spring Village. So, and we cater for about uh, 40 children in each location. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, we, be, be, we, when we started in Kingstown, it was 15 children. Then we added Barley, then we added Georgetown and Spring Village. So. Basically, we cater for about oh, about 150 mm -hmm. children in total, and um, I fundraise for it heavily in, in St. Vincent, and also I have some angels abroad as well who help, <clears throat> who help donate to the program. And um, this year, the program is called From the Sea Part Two, because last year we did part one, and we focused on whales, and this year is the part two, we're focusing on the octopus. And um, we hope to do a part three next year. I haven't decided as yet what we will focus on. But if you look around, you'll see the children are making a lot of sea creatures out of paper mache. And they've been doing drawings of the octopus holding like eight different objects. And from what we saw earlier, they're, all, they're showing much enthusiasm. And you were also saying, Looking at Dings is painted and saying, I like this one and I like that one. Yeah, so that's that, really good. Yeah, it's really nice for them to, to see what a professional artist work, his work looks like. And um, I think this is very important because it's, it's inspirational and um, it, it's good for the children. So we're doing a, we educating as well as mm -hmm. getting people inspired and yeah, I, I think it's good. It's good for all of this to be happening in this space. What we've done for the first time this year is offer a sewing program. And I was amazed at the turnout that we had. We wow. had quite a few children. And I'm thinking that we should expand on it because there were quite a few young, young girls mm -hmm. who are really interested in sewing. And that's good. That's, That's very, very good. good. Yeah. I'm excited They're about eager that. To explore their creative yeah. Sides. Well, in order to make fashion, you got to sew. As I keep telling them, just thread the needle. You got to thread the needle, <laughs> and, and then see what happens after that. Okay. This comes down on next week, Wednesday, the 8th of August. We're having a sip and paint for adults. Mm. Uh, yeah, we will be. You come. You but first you have to register. You have to tell us you are coming so that we can prepare for you and you're given a canvas, a nine by 12 canvas and paints. And we have a coach, Miss Yolanda Holder, and she will, usually she has a theme and she will guide you so that you can create your own masterpiece, which you home. can take it home. Yeah. So and we serve drinks too, in case you need a little courage to pick up that paintbrush. But um, yeah, that, that's going to be happening next Wednesday. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to encourage the, 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 the community, especially it's really for the adults, but young, younger children can come as well, but it's for adults to come and bond. And what time will it start? It starts at 7. Yeah. Sip and? Sip and paint. Sip and paint. Yeah, I, it's called... More paint let's, than sipping. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Let's Paint Tonight. Let's that, paint that's tonight. the local name, but okay. t for a general description, we say sip and paint. So I was asking things, what was the idea behind this, his showing? Mm -hmm. He said, you approach him, something yes. like that. Yeah, because, it, you know, this art center has been, we opened in the 4th of March, 2017. So not many artists, local artists, know about us. 
And so I've had to go out there and call people and get suggestions from other people who have shown hair. And his name came up. And you know, I've been hearing about Dinks for a very long time, but I never met him until this show came about. I've heard about him being a very well-known local artist, and I never, never met him until this. And it was fun working with him in that I had to um, interview him, discovered how, and hair, how he started to paint. Mm. And that was very interesting. Yes, he has an interesting story. Very interesting. And most of the artists do. They do, but, you know, I like to bring that out so that the younger um, children or people in the community would know that, hey, maybe I can do this too. It's not some... You know, it's just not like magic, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it can be done. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for what you're doing here. Yeah, I like. <laughs> you and you I like hope it. that you will continue for many, many years to come. We've come to the end of this evening's presentation. Do join us again on Thursday when we have another informative package for you. I'm Nadia Slater. I'll see you then.